your brother's got almost 5 million followers. You got 1.3. I'm like, yeah, I've got 1.3 million followers though. Yes. <laughs> but the key to it is I am proud of Andrew. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Why are you trying to climb up there by yourself? Who but your brothers? Who but your family should you be teaming up with? And I thought, you know what? If I had 10 brothers, I'd take over the fucking world. Why are you able to mix family and business, but I, but most people can't? He said, look, white people are stupid. How lonely is the journey to the top? And what has imploded a lot of family wealth is this whole single parent thing, in my opinion. And by the way, I'm saying this because I got three kids with two different mothers. Yeah, you may call me whatever it case may be. You can judge me, all that stuff. But listen, I want you to learn from my mistake. So at my expense of you learning and you dropping your negative comments, I mean, trolling me, learn from me. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapata here. Haley, it's you from Dallas, Texas. And once again, we have another reaction video. But instead of Andrew Tate this time around, we got actually his younger brother, Tristan Tate. By the way, this is not a reaction to how Andrew got canceled and basically delisted from every social media outside. By the way, in my opinion, that's another form of domination when every social media platform and the internet unilaterally decides to ban you. It's another completely different video. I'm just here to react to his younger brother, Tristan, and his conversation with Sneeko? Sneeko or Sneeko? Sneeko. Sneeko. This brother looks half black Filipino and looks like one of my cousins, but I'm intrigued about what this guy has to say. Uh, how awesome is it today to be a, a teenager, to be in your young 20s, and you literally have access to everybody in the world that has a example? By the way, that goes both ways. A bad example or a good example, your choice and how, to, how you want to live your life, but how awesome it is today that this talk, technology called social media can get people connected from all over the world without putting time on in the air or in an airplane flight or the, the financial investor to do that. A guy like Schneeko, who I understand is what, 23 years old? He's 23 years old and having conversation with the Tate, one of the Tate brothers. So let's get into this conversation about money making secrets on this episode with Tristan Tate interviewed by Schneeko. Waster and the biggest distraction that you could have. It's like the biggest investment of everything. And I noticed that taking streaming seriously and taking my career seriously has, I've had to like be kind of alone in here for the most part. I don't talk to my friends as much. My roommate's in there like sleeping in the other room right now, like watching the live stream on his phone. I haven't talked to him in like a week. I just came back from Miami and this is, he's, he's hearing this just based on this is one of my closest friends. You really need to, to cut a lot of people off. Uh, that's true. You know, uh, I don't know much about the Schneeko, 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 but uh, that's right. I mean, if you want to pursue success, you're probably gonna most likely be different than everybody else in your entire life. Uh, sad that is though, he uh, hasn't talked to his roommate even though they share a wall. I guess uh, that's how people connect these days. Doesn't matter if they're in the same room, same house, they're connected on social media through the phones. How lonely is the journey to the top? I am very fortunate. I, I don't know what loneliness feels like. And that's something that most men can't say. And it's why me and my brother, when we understood through meeting very good friends of ours. I'm so sick though, how he and his brother, Andrew, kind of have to have the same voice and same accent. Pretty interesting how brothers can sound virtually alike. When we understood through meeting very good friends of ours who were married for 10 years, felt alone, ex-military guys who felt that sense of brotherhood and, and loyalty and companionship in the army or on their sports team, their, their college baseball team, their fraternity, their, their, their football team, and they lose it and they balance all their happiness on one female. And they end up getting married and they end up in these sad, lonely marriages. Those are the guys who, t who opened my eyes to how special the relationship I have with my brother is. And that's what I try to tell the world as well. I don't know what loneliness feels like. You know, I was born in a very underprivileged family. I grew up r absolutely broke. Uh, I didn't have the best, the best, uh, the be I, didn't, I wasn't dealt the best hand but there was always an ace up my sleeve. So I don't know what that feels like. I've always had companionship. I've always had someone who had my back, someone to fight with me, someone to work with me in terms of my brother. So I'm not gonna sit here and say that the, that the journey to the top for me necessarily was lonely. By the way, I've, I've heard it both ways. I've heard people that don't have the right circumstances, underprivileged circumstances, they feel lonely. I've also heard the flip side, people have wealth, uh, they feel lonely too as well. What connects the two in terms of how you go through that experience is one word, and that word is attitude, attitude. Your altitude is determined by your attitude. And I think that Tristan Tate, he and his brother Andrew had a very good attitude in terms of who they leaned on, 
who they listened to, who they admired and wanted to reach up to. I think that was their attitude that allowed them to not be lonely because uh, oftentimes, especially the men, uh, when we don't have the right answers, when we don't have the right associations, when we don't have the right relationships or the best things going for us, it's easy to get back into our cave and not talk to anybody else or get back into something that we can just work with our hands away from any conversation. Your journey, getting through whatever you're going through to get to the top of whatever level that you're at, to get to that level, you have to have a right attitude because that right attitude will attract the right people, the right skills, the ability to want to acquire the right skills and the opportunities will present themselves. But because if you don't have the right attitude and an opportunity presents itself to you, you won't even recognize it. But let me tell the young man out there, you need to be able to identify low quality friends and cut them off and curate the people around you into a group of winners, a group of men who want to go out there and achieve the same things as you. And the journey to the top not only won't be lonely, but it will be far easier. They say don't mix family and business, but that's all that you do. Yeah, I disagree with that too. I love family and business. Why are you able to mix family and business, but, I, but most people can't? I don't believe that most people can't. I believe that some of the most successful men that I've ever met mix family and business. hundred percent. People who own Walmart are family business. Yeah, Waltons. Like the, the elites, the billionaires at the yeah, top the say money doesn't buy happiness. Oh, don't mix family and business. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Well, who are you going to trust with your, Stranger your, or your family. money, your finances, your cars, your Blood more is in the so water. than your own brother? They're going right. to tell me not to team up with him and team up with what some dude yep. who might stab me in the back for a piece of pussy or a few dollars? No absolutely mix family and business. I learned this. By the way, I'm in business with my wife. I'm in business with my daughter. I'm in business with my mother. My cousins just started coming on board business after 23 years, so I've been patient. In the meantime, I wasn't waiting for any of them. I decided to lead the way. But here's the thing too as well. In the meantime, I've made more money with strangers than I ever had with friends and family. A lot of my cousins, I don't have a brother. I have a younger sister who sometimes is my bigger sister, but I made a lot of money with her through her because she's introduced me to some relationships that have provided themselves to be very fruitful because my sister knows what I'm looking for. Uh, my mother, she discerns basically on who I should associate with and not associate with because for me, my personality type, I like everybody. My mom's like, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. By the way, the weird thing is, my wife is the same way too as well. So uh, my cousins, Leon, he just came on board with, in business with me and, and we're, uh, he just got licensed. He's a nurse, Filipino, right? He's coming board with business, coming in on like gangbusters into the, uh, in a, into the financial services insurance industry. So I 100% recommend if you can do it, go in business with your family. Now, just because of your brother, your sister, your wife, your husband, doesn't mean that automatically they're gonna think the way you think. You still gotta sell it to them. And don't take it so personally that they don't listen to you. You still got to sell them a vision. Still got to send them a formula. You got to sell, sell them a why you're deciding to invest in this particular endeavor the way you want to see yourself in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. You got to sell that vision. And don't be disappointed if they don't buy into that vision right away. In the meantime, they're going to see you work. They're going to see you grind. They're going to see you put the time in to acquire the skills, to shake the right hands, to be at the right conferences, to be at the right meetings and read the right books. They're going to watch you do that. So if you find yourself with family and friends that don't listen to you, don't stop, don't wait. You're not looking for the validation. God gave you a dream in your heart, your vision. He gave it to you, specifically to you. It's not for everybody else to understand. That's why God gave it to you. I'm gonna go off on a tangent here. I learned this from a Muslim brother of mine, Bali from Luton. He oh was a God. lawyer at your age. He was your age when I was still completely broke. Uh, he was older than me, so I must have been maybe 19 at the time. And he was driving a Ferrari sometimes, a Rolls Royce sometimes. He was always rolling in style. Now, entry-level lawyer, 60, 70,000 pounds a year. I mean, I know he wasn't making that much money. I said, Bali, how do you manage to have these nice cars and shit? When you're so young, you've only just passed the bar. How have you done it? By the way, what a great question. He asks somebody who's young, just like them. So instead of hating on them, which a lot of people do, instead of hating on a person that's showing success, hating on a person that's, you know, I don't know, wearing the nice suits and wearing the right clothes and driving the right cars and living in the homes that you love to live in, why don't you ask them? Why not envy? You know what happens with envy? It's two things, ambition and laziness. The byproduct of that is envy. So don't say I'm ambitious if you're unwilling to put the work because you're lazy. Forget about this. So therefore, you don't have this byproduct of envy because the 
byproduct of envy is a very toxic personality trait, a very toxic behavior. It doesn't deserve any way in your life for you to be happy and, and fruitful. So if you find somebody that's willing to do the work and has a vision, putting those two together, and they have certain things, they're experiencing certain things, and you're not, ask yourself that question. Am I ambitious or lazy? And by the way, the most dangerous people that you'll ever stumble across in your life are those people, ambitious and lazy people, and they call themselves your friend. But behind closed doors, they're spiting you. Behind door, closed doors, they're throwing knives in your back to other people. Behind closed doors, they're throwing gossip about you. Oh, you know, I'm not so sure about their shady activities. When it could be completely legit, they're envious of you because they're unwilling to do the work, but yet they want so much in life. So beware of those people, like what he said, cut those people out, find out those folks, cut them out and start bringing people around you that'll uplift you, partner with you, create opportunities for you and celebrate your victories alongside you. He said, look, white people are stupid, <laughs> but he didn't mean white people. What he meant was British people and the, the way British people conduct their family life. Mm -hmm. He said, I, me and my brothers all live in our family home. All of our money goes into extending and building our family estate. Our wives stay home and cook and clean and look after our children. And I'm a doctor. Uh, sorry, I'm a lawyer. My brother's a doctor. My other brother's an accountant. My dad's an engineer. My other brother's work in construction. To help so I'm guessing here he's pulling his, they're pulling, the, this family's pulling their assets. Build the house. All of our resources are pooled. And there you we go. have one that Ferrari, is... one Rolls Royce. One... And by the way, I have not watched this. So you and I are watching this episode together so I, it's not like i watched this before my reaction video i'm watching it simultaneously you are watching this together uh, by the way you might have an advantage of it because you might have seen this video already this episode already but i'm just watching this for the very first time we're experiencing this for the most part together one mclaren and like five toyotas that we can use whenever we like and i thought you know what if i had 10 brothers i'd take over the fucking world i mean think about this real quick if you had the disposition to say hey fam we're gonna come together with a plan we're gonna buy this three four five unit apartment complex we're all gonna live in it we're all going to pay the mortgage on this property. Normally what we would have paid a, a rent, we're gonna build some equity in this property. We're gonna have an opportunity for this equity to grow in the next three, four, five, 10 years. We eventually cash out the equity of the property, whether to put some money in our pocket or invest in other real estate or other endeavors. And we live off the fruits of our labor. And then in the meantime, our children, our families can operate together, have dinner together, have weekends together. We can build life and do life together. Think about how much more wealthier your family can be instead of having separate homes. By, by the way, this is why I also feel that if you get involved in a wrong relationship and you get her pregnant and then you get married versus getting in a right relationship first, then get married and then get her pregnant. So therefore you have some kids. The previous to that, if you find out that you didn't even like the girl, you don't like the guy, well, guess what? Now you're in a relationship where you're divorced or you're separated. Now you're in two different homes. And what has imploded a lot of family wealth is this whole single parent thing, in my opinion. And by the way, I'm saying this because I got three kids with two different mothers. Yeah, you might call me whatever the case may be. You can judge me, all that stuff. But listen, I want you to learn from my mistake. So at my expense of you learning and you dropping your negative comments on me and trolling me, learn from me. I chose wrong. I paid the entire 30s, my entire 30s, to repair the mistakes of my 20s. And I hope that you can learn from my mistake. I can say this not to judge anybody. I'm judging myself. Maybe you're judging me. I don't care. But all I'm saying is that if you pick the wrong woman, it's got to be more than she's just hot or she's got a body or she does this to me or she does this for me. It's got to be more than just sexual and physical. There's so much more to a relationship and doing life together because the worst that can happen is she gets pregnant or you have a child with him and you don't like each other and you divorce, your finances are separated and that's just the beginning of it. I'm talking about emotional heartbreak spiritual heartbreak, mental health heartbreak, worrying about your weekends, dealing with this with and then what's worse about it, in your mode of, oh my gosh, my life sucks, and next you know, you meet somebody else whose life sucks too as well, and then you get together, you have sex, oops, she has a kid, oops, let me get married to her, oh, it's not working out, and you repeat the process. Now you're in a pattern. And that's a pattern I realized I was in by the time I was 29, 30 years old. After that, I said, you know what, I need to follow a different pattern. And so my encouragement to you if, you, if you're watching this episode, is to make sure if you are going to pool your resource and be smart about it, make sure the right family members and the right friends that become family are part of that pool and people that you can trust for the long term. You can do life 
together. You're willing to commit and manage expectations up front, manage expectations about money, success, uh, the, the evolution of how you're growing together, and then you guys can branch off. But what a smart thing to do here. And that was a real eye-opener for me. So the, the, the Muslim families don't say don't mix family and business. They're all about it, and they're largely... My observation uh, is Jewish do this too as well. Mormon definitely do this too as well. A lot of my financial mentors had been Mormon and Jewish. And um, I see a lot of Asian cultures, Chinese, uh, uh, Korean, Vietnamese do this too as well. Not necessarily Filipino, but the Filipinos, very much apart. I'm speaking because I'm Filipino. We do things very much apart. It's about independence, isolation, do your own thing instead of let's collectively do this together. So weird how Filipinos, even though we're considered somewhat Asian, don't work together, but yet the Koreans and the, uh, the Vietnamese and, and the uh, other Ch uh, Chinese cultures work together, pooling their money together, so therefore they can step up eventually over time and then invest in businesses. They create additional resources so they can reinvest back into their, their families and expand their estates, expand their wealth over time. Especially in the United Kingdom, where I'm from, far more successful than the white families or the British families, where what they'll do is they'll have five sons. The five sons will go rent five houses, pay five different landlords, Bingo. study five different completely unrelated things, fight for five jobs in different fields where they can't help but support each other, meet five different toxic women, f uh, support <laughs> these five different women all independently outside of the family home. There is no unified family Correct. home. And then, you know, by the time they're 45, it's like, oh, well, I've got a nice BMW now. Why are you trying to climb up there by yourself? Who but your brothers? Who but your family should you be teaming up with? Uh, I think it's total nonsense. So when you say they say, who is they? Why do you think um, you and Andrew haven't had like a battle of egos? By the way, I, I like this question by Sneeko. By the way, I don't, I don't know much about this kid. Love the questions he's asking. Don't know much about his mindset, mentality, or how he makes his money. But I love the fact that he's asking questions, gaining perspective in his own way. Bright young man here. And uh, I don't know much about his YouTube channel, but uh, I like the fact that he's asking questions and paying attention. Uh, back to Tristan here. I'm sure he and Andrew have had a butting of heads, the battle of the ego. But what one thing is they have an agreement. They've managed other expectations of what they want to do together. Having fights, having disputes, having conflict is part of the growing process. And uh, I'm excited really to see them continue to evolve and grow because I think the world needs more of a Tristan and Andrew Tate. Now, I agree with them on a lot of things. I just don't agree with them on their faith uh, aspect. I don't agree with them on, on their feelings of uh, uh, women towards women. But outside of that, entrepreneurship, mindset, attitude, alpha male type stuff, love it. I think that's the reason that me and my brother events, like we um, are not able to have like synchronization. I wonder what Sneeko's home dynamic is I wonder if he was, they were raised by a single mom or a single dad. I wonder if mom and dad are together uh, because for these two brothers, Shniko and his brother, whatever his name is, for them to have a, a discourse, um, uh, an opposite viewpoint about wealth, prosperity, happiness, and progression in life, uh, for them to have a, a, a separate way of doing things, something may have happened, some form of family trauma may have happened. I don't know much. I'm just super guessing, but it kind of leads to me in that direction. I, I'm the bigger brother, so I think I've, I've maybe been too hard on him a little bit and at the same time like he's been trying to find his own lane and you know, you're, you're the little brother of the two how have you not had a battle of egos because i mean obviously andrew was the more famous and like do you ever have like a competition in your head you know what it is one it's that i do very well of my own account so nowadays a lot of the haters will message me your brother's got almost five million followers you got 1.3 i'm like yeah i've got 1.3 million followers though Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then what are these haters and these trolls, what kind of followership they got? 10,000, 500, 1,500? It's so, it's, so, uh, it's so horrible out there that instead of celebrating somebody, you're trying to tear them down to make yourself feel better. Because again, you're ambitious yet lazy, and yet you want to take anybody down. For example, well, we just took our, our family this year to Aruba. We took our family to uh, Paris and Monaco. We took our family. We just came back from Cabo. You might have noticed this tan starting to peel away. And we're flying first class. And somebody says, oh, so you can't afford a private jet? I'm taking my family. We're creating experiences together. And you're dogging me out because I'm not taking a private jet? So what? Are you creating experiences for your family? 
Are you flying all over the world with your family, with the people that you love and care about? Are you creating meaningful experiences? Are you creating meaningful conversation with people in, uh, that, that you love in all parts of the world? Are you appreciating America for what it has to provide when you come back home to America? Probably not. So why are you trying to pull me down? Focus on your growth versus trying to stunt mine. Why do I have to add what Andrew has into it? <laughs> yeah. And, and all of our, right. in terms of net worth, it's exactly all of our businesses, all of our cars, all of our homes are, are shared. And they always have been. And we made the money before YouTube. Uh, well, we started making money before, before YouTube. So our net worth is completely equal. But it's not just the fact that I am very secure in, of, in and of myself as a man. I'm strong. I'm fit. I had a good fight career. Better than anyone who hates on me. I'm richer than anyone who hates on me. Got more followers than 99.9% <laughs> sure. of the people who hate on me. Yeah. So the, com the comparing myself with Andrew doesn't do much. But the key to it is I am proud of Andrew. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Man, these Tate brothers are going somewhere, man. And by the way, if you have this type of attitude, because this is a reflection of not them, whether you celebrate them or you try to pull them down. It's not, it's not a reflection on that. It's a reflection on you. It's a reflection of your attitude and how horrible your life is. Celebrate people's success and victories for crying out loud. You, and ask yourself, what do I need to do to get on that level? Because damn, I'm next. Why troll somebody? Why dog somebody out when they're successful and, and they're climbing up? Be happy for them because eventually you want people to be happy for you, right? He is my brother. Oh, he's the four-time kickboxing world champion. Oh, Tristan, you're only the two-time European champion. I don't care if I was a zero champion. <laughs> My brother's the four-time world kickboxing champion. I am happy for him. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's blowing up all over the internet right now. He's exploded Great. far more than me. More people know his name. But ask yourself this question. When you saw Andrew Tate blowing up all over the internet, you know what I asked myself? How is this guy doing this? Not who is this guy? What a fool, what an idiot. I'm asking myself from a strategic standpoint. How's this guy doing? This guy is out hustling me, out working me, out relationshiping me, out handshaking me. How is he doing this? What is this multiplier? How is he getting people to celebrate him and share his content? Were you asking yourself that question? Or were you like, oh, what, a, what an a-hole. What, uh, what, what a jerk. You, you took it at face value instead of digging deeper. So that's the difference between people who are going up and rising up in the world versus you just staying where you're at or even worse as years go on is what do you ask yourself? Are you here superficial or are you ask, asking the questions three, four, five, ten, 10, levels deep? Again, the choice is yours based on your attitude. I am proud that that's my brother and he's doing so well. So it's not just setting your ego aside. Keep the healthy competition. Keep your own personal ego. You and your brother should both be trying to do well for yourselves. Yes. Independent of uh, of, of comparing each other, uh, comparing to one another. But also, if your brother now launched some stream and had some YouTube channel with 20 million subscribers and you stayed exactly where you are, that doesn't matter. Your brother has a 20 million subscriber YouTube. Fucking give him a round of applause. Give yeah. him a pat on the back. Buy that man a fucking drink. Like, in what universe should you be mad about that? People hit me with that all the time. Are you mad your brother has more followers than you? No. It's like if Muhammad Ali was your brother, would you be like, oh, my brother's a better boxer than me. I'm upset. He's no, a bad like, my man. Bro my brother's the greatest heavyweight of all time. Speaking of Muhammad Ali, we uh, hung up with his daughter, Layla Ali. My wife interviewed Layla Ali on stage a couple of weeks ago. And uh, what a great family. What a great couple. Um, she was talking to us about her husband, Curtis Conway. He used to be a... Uh, uh, wide receiver of the Chicago Bears, but uh, had uh, breakfast with uh, her security team. Great people, great entrepreneurs around them. I can tell this family is going to continue to go places because they got the right people around them. And that's something that should be celebrated uh, in your life. Are you curating? Are you bringing forth? Are you recruiting the right people in your life that wants you to strive for more? Or are you recruiting people in your life that says, ah, you can take it easy. It's okay to be content. There's no reason to strive for excellence. It's okay just to be average and ordinary. And yet you want an extraordinary life. Doesn't make sense. Of all time, Muhammad Ali. Like, why would it make you sad? Mm -hmm. so also, you know, put your egos aside. Concentrate on doing your own shit. Winning in an irrespective of comparing yourself. But when he does something well and when you do something well, you should be proud of one another. And I'm like that with all my friends. That extends to all of my friends. I've got a bunch of boys that when they're winning, I'm winning. I'm happy to see it done. My guys will buy new watches, new Rolexes. 
new suits, new, new shoes, new cars, new houses, new homes. And I don't think, oh, well, you know, that watch is better than the one I'm currently wearing. I think, fuck it. My boy just bought a $100,000 Rolex. Yeah. Good for him. Yes. Good for him. Those are the three words to sum it up. I love it. Well, funny thing. I coach people in the area of personal finance and entrepreneurship all across the country. I've spoken to thousands of people, whether from stage or over cigars, small groups, mentorship groups. Um, we go to retreats at uh, different homes and places all across the United States, all across the world. And one of the weirdest things I got to teach people is how to learn how to celebrate other people's success. Instead of comparing, compete. You compete with you. It's you versus you. Ask yourself this question. So what if somebody's ahead of you? They're ahead of you five times, 10 times, 100 times ahead of you. Are you competing to say, hey, if they can do it, I can do it. And why aren't I doing it? Because at my level, I can get a better credit score. At my level, I can put some money in the bank. At my level, I can find a way to earn a raise. At my level, I can find a way to create a side hustle. At my level, I can learn how to start a corporation. At my level, I can start creating my personal and business credit together. At my level, I can start my, driving my dream car. At my level, I can stay care, taking care of whatever collections I might have that I haven't taken care of because, listen, collections and credit scores are a reflection, again, of your attitude. Whatever you're conscious about is a reflection of your bank account. And so when you're looking at your life, are you also celebrating other people's success? Because when I see people winning, I project myself, can't wait to get there. Can't wait to get there. And that's the difference between the average and ordinary and the extraordinary and the excellent. The question for you is going forward throughout the rest of this year and for the rest of your life, who do you want to be? Are you clear about what you want? Are you clear about the price necessary to get you what you want? Are you clear and willing to make that commitment to your family of willing to pay that type of price to get what you want. At the same time too as well, last but not least, how good will it feel when you start achieving some of those goals? How good would it feel to retire your mom? How good will it feel to make sure that your wife, your husband never takes a paycheck from anybody else again but your own business? How good will it feel to make sure that your kids, that you can go to private school or public school or homeschool, whatever. You can do it because you chose to do it. Compete with that. Compete with you not being complacent. Compete with you not being lazy. You know, it's very easy. I look at any scripture in the Bible in terms of what God says about work. Bottom line, if you don't work, you don't deserve to eat, let alone complain about something else. That being said, I want to know your thoughts, your questions. You agree with me? You don't agree with me? What did you think about Tristan Tate? What do you think about Schneeko? Sharp uh, uh, young guy here. I'd love to get to know more about this guy. Maybe uh, do a couple more reactions to him as I... Uh, Continue these episodes on the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel. A channel dedicated to help you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. That being said, guys, if you like these reaction videos, I got a couple more here for you to check out. If you found some value in this video, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of other videos and you haven't done so yet, please consider hitting subscribe, hitting notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, I'm your mighty smart guy from Dallas, Texas, and until we meet again, Cantillo Smart, Cantillo Smart. And be money smart today.